So we're going to talk specifically about two types of spherical mirrors. They're called a concave mirror and a convex mirror. A concave mirror, an example, is a shaving mirror or a cosmetics mirror. The type that would be used in a telescope, although they actually use parabolic mirrors in telescopes. A convex mirror is one you would see in like a convenience store where they want to be able to see down all the different rows. Uh, I've seen them in hospital corridors where a couple hallways meet up and come together so that you can tell if someone's coming down the other hall. I've seen um, them a few times for blind driveways to help people tell if it's safe to pull out and be able to see if there's a car coming. So concave versus convex. A concave mirror, I think of a cave. The back of the mirror bends outwards. The, in, the actual uh, shiny, smooth surface is on the cave. I think I can walk into a cave. When we think about a concave mirror, now what we mean by spherical mirror is that this portion is actually just part of a sphere. We could have a big old sphere where this mirror was just a portion of it. So we could be inside this sphere, essentially. When we draw our diagrams to kind of represent where images will show up, we draw first an optical axis. This axis is a line that hits the mirror at a right angle. What that means is if light were traveling along this surface, um, along this line, since it hits at an incident angle of zero degrees, it would reflect back out at the same incident angle of zero degrees. So as a reminder, law of reflection, the incident angle, so the angle between the normal and the light ray representing the direction the light is coming from must equal the reflected angle. So the angle between the normal and where the right, uh, light reflects to. We can draw other light rays. For example, if I draw a light ray up here, I'm gonna draw it parallel to this optical axis. So here is my incident light ray. It would reflect off such that the incident and reflected light rays relative to the normal are the same. So theta incident has to equal theta reflected. If I draw another light ray, actually let's go with a different color. I'm gonna draw this one parallel to the optical axis as well, just down lower. When this reflects off, same idea, the incident angle has to equal the reflected angle. With a concave mirror, all lines that are drawn parallel to this optical axis will reflect following the law of reflection, but they will reflect such they all cross and converge at a specific point. This point is called the focal point. All of these lines so the, all of these light rays represent the direction the light is coming from. If we draw them all parallel to this optical axis, when they reflect, they end up converging, actually reflecting all towards this point. Hence, they would focus the light at that point, and we call that point the focal point. 
We're gonna make measurements along the optical axis. If I measure from this point to the mirror along that optical axis, we're gonna use an F to represent what's called the focal length. It turns out, if you remember, I mentioned we can think of this mirror as part of a sphere. This sphere would have a specific radius. I have not drawn this sphere well, though. It turns out that focal length ends up being half the radius of the sphere. So the radius of our sphere would actually be twice the focal point. So my freehanding this picture isn't the best. So the radius of my sphere would be this distance. Concave mirrors are different than convex in that they do focus the light at a specific point. If we draw a convex mirror, a convex mirror, the shiny side bends out towards you. So concave, the shiny side, the reflective side bends away from you. Convex mirror, the mirror itself bends towards you. Mirror bends towards you. Concave, the mirror bends away from you. And just a silly way I remember it, I think of a cave. A cave is something I can walk into. I don't know if that is helpful for you or not, but there you go. So with this convex mirror, with it bending towards us, we still will draw this optical axis. We will end up drawing this in all of our situations. That represents any light coming in along the optical axis is gonna reflect out along the same line. If I draw a light ray that's parallel to the optical axis, it obeys the law of reflection and it is going to reflect out where the incident angle and the reflected angle are equal. If I draw another line that's parallel, same idea, incident angle has to equal reflected angle. Now notice these reflected light rays So one, two, three, they, di they diverge. They're not going to come together and cross at this, any same location. If you recall with the plane or flat mirror, whenever we had those reflected light rays that diverged, we drew little dotted lines backwards If I do that here, they all appear to converge at this point behind the mirror. This is considered a virtual focal point. It's virtual simply because those light rays did not actually pass through the mirror and converge there. It's because we had to draw those dotted lines to see where they would converge. Hence, it's virtual. The focal length, we're gonna measure along the optical axis between these two points, we will call the focal length. Mathematically, when we solve problems, we have to use a negative value. 
and that's because it's virtual. It's because that focal point appears to be behind the mirror. That's where it would focus the light if the light could actually travel through the mirror. It is still true that the focal length is half the radius of curvature. We just have to remember for a convex mirror to use a negative value. And now we're gonna have a table in the test notes that helps us remember that, which I will pull that in when we do some problems. That table though has information for both mirrors and lenses. So just make sure you're looking for mirrors right now while we're dealing with mirrors. So as we solve problems, we end up with a couple of equations. One over the focal length has to equal one over s plus one over s prime. S is an object distance. So we're gonna walk through a few scenarios in terms of putting an object somewhere and estimating with light rays where the image will appear to be. So we talked about S being object distance. I'll write it in the middle. We talked about that when we talked about the plane mirror or flat mirror. S prime is image distance. These distances are all measured along the optical axis that we drew, measured from the object to the mirror, the image to the mirror, the focal point and the mirror, which we call that the focal length. This equation is technically called the thin lens equation. We're going to talk lenses as well. It is derived assuming that the light does not travel through any significant thickness. I don't know if you've ever looked closely at a mirror. It's a piece of glass over a thin, smooth surface. So we're assuming that piece of glass is extremely thin. Another equation we get is that magnification, so M, capital M, stands for magnification. It is equal to negative S prime over S. A negative versus positive magnification has different meanings, which we'll go through. We also can say that the absolute value of the magnification is, we write it as an H prime over H, a height of the image over height of the object though it doesn't technically need to be the height. I mean, if you're looking at a person, it could be like the width of their shoulders in their actual human self versus the width of their shoulders in the image. So even though we say height, it can be any dimension of the object versus image compared to each other. So we'll walk through those as well. Let's look at these though. Let's look at a ray diagram talking about a convex mirror first, mainly because it's the simplest. So again, anytime I draw a diagram, I'm gonna draw this optical axis. What we mean by that is it hits the surface of the mirror at a right angle. Any light, traveling along that axis would come in and reflect back along that same line. So if I drew light coming in, it reflects back on the same light. Optical axis. Now I'm gonna draw the focal point back here. If you remember, let me scroll just a sec. 
coming back on this right diagram, when we drew all of those, well, those three lines, all parallel to each other, all parallel to the optical axis, those lines diverged, but then we drew those dotted lines back to this point where they appear to converge. Okay, so that's what I'm drawing on this optical axis. And if we want, we can put negative F so that we remember it needs to be a negative value when we use the equations that I wrote down above. Now to estimate where an image is going to be, we can draw a couple light rays, but we need to draw something that represents the object. It's pretty common to draw, come back here, an object that is an arrow. My object distance will be from the mirror along the optical axis to this object. We would call that S, the object distance. Now the base of the arrow is on the optical axis. The tip of the arrow goes up higher. This object has a certain height to it and it is up and down height in this case just because of how I've chosen to use an arrow and that's sorry for the scribbles. Now to estimate where the image will be we have to draw at least two ray, rays, light rays. Again the light rays are just the arrows representing the direction the light is traveling in. One of the light rays I'm gonna draw I'm going to go parallel to the optical axis. And as we've already seen, I know it reflects such that if I draw a dotted line backwards, it goes through that focal point. So that is one of my light rays. My image is going to show up somewhere along either the actual reflected light ray or the dots going backwards, depending upon if the multiple reflected light rays diverge. Okay, my second one I'm gonna draw is I'm actually gonna come to that optical axis. I'm drawing both of these from the tip of the arrow so that the where they either cross or appear to cross will represent the tip of the arrow. All right, so comparing these two reflected light rays, they diverge. That means we draw those dotted lines back. Now those dotted lines are the reflected light ray dotted back. And notice these dotted lines cross right here. They, these are just approximated where they would appear to cross. Since I drew my arrow and my light rays coming from the tip of my object arrow, where these lines appear to cross has to be the tip of my image arrow. And the base always goes down to the optical axis if that's where we had the base of the object. Now this is a virtual image specifically. It's virtual because we had to draw these dotted lines to figure out where those reflected light rays would appear to cross. This image is not inverted. Just like looking in a bathroom mirror, we see ourselves normal, our heads on top, our feet are on bottom. That may seem totally a no doubt to you at the moment, but you'll see when we get to the concave mirror that we do get upside down images. 
we call them inverted images, depending upon where the object is located. So this image is virtual. It is not inverted, which we also sometimes call upright. And this image, if we pulled out a ruler and measured the height of this image, it is smaller than the actual height of the object. With a convex lens, sorry, convex mirror. We will be talking lenses a little bit later. These, this is always the result of our images. Our images are always virtual with a convex mirror. They are always not inverted or upright with a convex mirror. They are also smaller than the original object. And you quite possibly have seen this before. If you go into like a gas station, a lot of times, so go into a Maverick, for example, a lot of times they will have a mirror up on the wall, like up in the corner. Because the image in the mirror is smaller, it actually gives you a larger field of view. You can see more of the store through in that mirror than if you had put just a flat mirror up. So it allows for a larger field of view. And you can watch down the different aisles. Look for those that are trying to stuff stuff in their pockets or just watch what's going on. So convex mirror is unique in this regard. We're also going to talk about the concave mirror. Now with this convex mirror, this is always the case for the images, regardless of how far away the object is from the mirror. We end up with a different situation with the concave mirror. We can still draw the mirror, draw an optical axis. And again, the optical axis is hitting the mirror at a right angle. If I draw the focal point on here, I can also draw the dot that represents the radius of curvature as well. It turns out because this focal point is on the side of the mirror that you would stand on to look in it, we can put the object at a variety of locations relative. We could put the object here, here, or here. And so that's what we want to look at, is depending upon where we put the object, we're going to get and see different images. Okay, so I'm going to approach this similar to the convex mirror. I'm going to draw an arrow. This arrow represents my object. Oh, I forgot to mention the image distance. Pardon me while I scroll up here really quick. In my picture, image distance would be between where this image appears to be and the optical axis. So that would be my S prime. Everything's measured along that optical axis. So S is the object to that optical axis, that distance image to that location is the image distance. The focal length is from F to that same line. So for example, here, let me just draw a line straight down and a line straight down. The distance along the optical axis between the object and where we would hit the mirror is our object distance. Okay, to estimate where the image will be, 
Now, I'm totally freehanding this, so it's not going to be perfect, but I can at least draw a couple of light rays to represent and kind of get an idea of where they would cross or if they would cross, and that will help me determine where the image, roughly at least, will be located. So similar to the convex mirror, I'm going to draw light rays from the tip of my object arrow. I find one of the easiest ones to draw is the one parallel to the optical axis because that one reflected through the focal point and passed through the focal point. So that's one option. With the convex mirror, I also went from the tip down to where we hit the optical axis and reflect off at the same angle. Notice these reflected light rays converge this time. They actually cross each other. They converge. Yay. What that means where they converge right there has to be the tip of my image arrow. The reason why it has to be the tip of the image arrow is because I drew these lines leaving the tip of the object arrow. And then the base of the image arrow has to be on the optical axis because that's where the object's base was. So this here if I measure from this location to that dotted line I drew, this is S prime. This is our image distance. This image is real. And that's because these light rays actually converge. It is real, it is upside down. We say it is inverted. It's not just upside down. It is also backwards. It's flipped side to side. I'm going to post a demonstration video so that you can watch for that flipping upside down and backwards. That's what we mean by inverted. In this case, if I measured the height of my, the object arrow I drew and the height of this image arrow, this image is smaller than the object. Now, this, this result is valid when S, the object distance, is greater than R, the radius of curvature. You don't need to memorize these things. You can easily do a rough sketch yourself and see in that sketch. Let's look at a concave mirror but this time put our object closer to the mirror. So still concave. We still want to draw our optical axis. We still want to draw the focal point and radius of curvature. But this time, let's put our object up here. So if we measure along the optical axis from here to here, that is our object distance. I'm just dotting those lines down so I'm not messing with the space up closer to F. So that S represents the distance from the object itself that I've drawn along that optical axis until I would hit the mirror. Okay, let's draw a couple rough sketches here. I'm going to draw my light ray that goes parallel to the optical axis and then it reflects through this focal point.
another light ray I can draw. Let me find a different color though. Uh, back to black for a minute. If I draw the line that goes to the optical axis, it will reflect off at the same angle. Let me draw this red one farther. We'll kind of change direction a tiny bit, sorry. These be reflected light rays. Converge again. They actually come together and cross. So let me lengthen my optical axis. Where they cross right here has to be the tip of my image arrow because I drew the light rays leaving the tip of my object arrow image. The distance from where this image shows up over to here, the same as measuring along the optical axis, would be as prime, the image distance. As prime is bigger than s, this image appears to be farther away from the mirror than the object is. So let's see what we have that's a little bit different. Over here, S prime was smaller than S. Our image was inverted. It was upside down and backwards. It was smaller. Here, this image is real. It's real because these light rays converge. This real image appears on the same side of the mirror as the object. But it is also inverted like the last one, meaning it is upside down and backwards. Right? We see this arrow in the image pointing down, where for, whereas for the object it was pointing up. But now if we pull out a ruler to measure the height of the object, to compare that to the height of the image, the image is much larger than the object. This is true for our concave mirror. If S is smaller than R, but bigger than F. Right? My object was placed between my radius of curvature and my focal point. I put it closer to the focal point than the radius of curvature. All of this will be true if our object is located between the radius of curvature and the focal point of our mirror. Which again, you don't need to memorize. We can totally do a rough sketch and see that. This real image technically could be projected on a screen if we wanted to. It would need to be a really nice mirror though to make it a clear image. Okay, we have one more option. We can still have a concave mirror, but we can place our object closer to the mirror than the focal point. So same general approach. A mirror, an optical axis, draw my focal point, draw my radius of curvature. This time I'm putting my object in here Meaning if I measure along that optical axis, this distance here is S, the object distance. Okay, let's draw some lines. 
I really like the parallel one because I know it reflects off and goes through this focal point. Let's find a different color for black again. The other light ray I've been doing is going to where the optical axis is, and then it reflects off at the same angle. Notice, if I keep drawing this one out and keep drawing this one out, these reflected light rays diverge. They don't come together. They're not going to cross. Anytime we know they diverge, we have to draw these little dotted lines back behind, behind the mirror. Draw my blue one a little bit farther. They appear as if they would converge right there. That is where the tip of my image arrow will go because I drew the light rays leaving the tip of the object arrow. This distance between the image and the mirror along that optical axis is S prime. Because we had to dot those lines backwards, this is a virtual image. Notice the virtual image is on the other, the back side of the mirror. If we move upwards just for a second here, these real images were on the same side of the mirror as the object. The virtual image is on the back side of the mirror, opposite the object. This image, we would say, is not inverted. We also could say it's upright is another way of saying that. And this image is bigger than the object. If we took out a ruler and measured the height of the object and then measured the height of the image, that image height is larger than the object height. This is why this is the situation in which you would use a concave mirror for a cosmetics mirror or a shaving mirror. It gives you an image. When you look in it, you see yourself, your face bigger than if you looked in just your regular flat mirror in your bathroom. This result is true for a concave mirror when S is less than F. If I were to draw F, that distance, it would be that horizontal distance from the focal point to the mirror along the optical axis. The distance of our object is smaller than that. And this is the result. Again, it's not hard to freehand a couple light rays to get an idea of where your image will show up. So I highly recommend doing that so you have an idea of where you will see different things. Now, as a reminder, I wrote these equations at the top when we started or earlier on in the video. The object distance, image distance, and focal length are related by this equation. And no, okay, this is a totally silly comment. You can't just flip the terms and add them together. Our other equations, magnification, negative S prime over S, absolute value of magnification, H prime over H. I want to show you one other thing that I'm going to pull from our test notes. When we talk about a virtual image being upright or not inverted versus inverted, what we mean by bigger or smaller, 
there's a handy table in our test notes that I highly suggest you keep handy as we look at problems. I'm going to go grab it though so I can show that to you. All right, so this is just from your test notes. This has information about lenses on it as well, which we're going to talk about next. But for now, mirrors, actually let's get a different color. Mirrors, mirrors, mirrors. Magnification, um, is the same whether we're talking mirrors or lenses in terms of the magnification and the sign. So mirror radius R, which also takes us to mirror focal length, which is half the radius of curvature. A concave mirror has a positive focal length. A convex mirror has a negative focal length. Image distance, S prime. Real images show up on the same side, same side as the object. So same side of the mirror as the object. If you go back to your picture for our concave mirror when we had our object outside, bigger, farther away from the focal point, that real image showed up on the same side as the object. Same side means an S prime that is positive. This real image is correlated to an S prime that is positive. Virtual images showed up on the opposite side compared to the object. That's a negative sign. This is a good check for when you are solving problems, when you solve a problem and you know you should get a virtual image, you should be looking for a negative answer for S prime. Okay, so it's not the number line. It just means virtual, which means opposite the side of the object. The magnification M. So if we use the equation negative S prime over S, we can get positive or negative answers. If we get a positive magnification, that means the image itself is upright or not inverted. If our image is inverted, that means we would come up with a negative answer for magnification. Or if we come up with a negative magnification, we thus would know that the image is inverted. Okay. Quite honestly, it's these signs that are typically the most challenging part of this section. It is not related to a number line. It's not related to a specific coordinate location on a number line. The plus and minus has to do with real and virtual, how those light rays are converging or diverging. Now the reason we have lenses listed separately is we end up, for example, on the image, a real image shows up on the opposite side instead of the same side. But a real image is gonna still mean positive. So keep this, it's in your test notes, keep this uh, table handy while you're solving problems and you sh should be able to find it quite helpful. We'll do some examples as well, so help you make sense of everything. And then we'll move on to lenses with refraction.